the uh, the meeting of the governing board for June 25, 2013 was called to order uh, a little over an hour ago, and then we went into executive session and recessed, and now I'm reconvening uh, the regular meeting of the governing board for June 25. Um, <clears throat> the, um, let's see, and, um, we will now have the Pledge of Allegiance. Mr. Miranda, will you lead us? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and Uh, the next item on the agenda is student life reports. Do we have uh, we have none tonight? Okay. Um, I uh, I'm going to I'm going to uh, announce substitutes uh, for tonight. Uh, Ms. Sherry Andres is here to represent Dr. Maria Harper Miranick. Uh, Janet Langley is here to represent Dr. Jean Giovannini. Uh, Cassandra Kakar is here to represent Anna, Anna Solly, and Clay Goodman is here to represent Ernie Laura. Thanks for being here. Um, Emeritus Awards, uh, Dr. Penn. Uh, my our honorary will not be able to make it, so we'll make sure that after your approval, we'll congratulate you first. Right. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> it's now time for Citizens Interim. I do not have any. Uh, notes for citizens interim, assuming there are none. Uh, the next item on the agenda is the approval of the order of the agenda. I will entertain a motion. I move we approve the order of the agenda. Right. Mr. Lum moves, Mr. Sarr seconds the uh, approval of the agenda. Any discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carries. Uh, the next item is uh, the consent agenda. And I would entertain a motion for consideration of the items on the consent agenda. I'd like to make a motion to pull a new appointment off of the agenda, please. New appointment? Yes. All new right. New employment. New employment. The, the entire... Um, All right, move it off the agenda or just to... Discussion? To discuss. Off. For discussion. All right. For All right. discussion. Sure. Uh, any, other, uh, any other item? All right, with the exception of consideration of employments, uh, is there approval for the consent agenda? So moved. Uh, Mr. Sarr moves. Second. Second. Uh, Mr. Miranda seconds a motion for, to approve the consent agenda uh, as nice. amended. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, all right, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carries. I think we will move directly then to the consideration of employments. Uh, Ms. Uh, uh, Ms. Pearson, do you have a, an issue about that? I would like uh, some clarification. Oh, thank you. I would like to uh, request clarification on the um, Mesa Community College item. There is uh, a. Um, oh, never mind. That's. I don't think that was the one. Let me get my bearings just a second. It's been a little while since I looked at this. Okay, they, uh, can someone please explain to me what it means for professional staff to be paid at a point five zero half time, and for uh, then twelve thousand three hundred and two fifty six uh, times two does not come to thirty thousand. Can somebody help me understand that? Which, what? Which page are you on? Five? Yes, uh, I, I think. I'm yeah, just asking for yes, clarification. Yes, I, I, I found it. It's under Mesa Community College uh, for professional staff. The reason, Miss Pearson, is that it's a nine-month nine contract. Month okay. Again, math twelve thousand for nine months does not equate to no employee being paid less than thirty thousand. But we have to start. We have to start with the thirty thousand dollar base, and then. 
and reduce it back to the calculations. We can produce the calculations for you, but there's no salary in the district that's left. Jim, you want to respond, please? Yes. If, uh, the, if you look at the 12,000 and you were extrapolate that out to 12 months, I think that that would be real close to about $15,000. And then this person is working 0.5, so if you multiply it times two, you're going to be right just over 30,000. 30, a little over 30. Yes. So the, the thing is that this person works less than 12 months and only 0.5 or 20 hours a week. Oh, out of oh. Okay. If you want us to provide you with the Could calculations, you? We, Thank we, you. we can do it before the end Thank of the meeting. Thank you. That's all I needed. Absolutely. Mr. Chairman? All right. Are you, would you like to move approval of the, the uh, uh, consideration of employments? No, but I'll let someone else. I right. move it. We approve the consideration for employment. All right. Mr. Lum moves. Second. Mr. Sarr seconds uh, the uh, consideration of employments. Any discussion? And all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carries. <clears throat> uh, we're now to the consideration of non-consent action items. The first, under business services, is an approval of authorization of increased expenditure for web security consulting services contract. Ms. Mr. Thompson. President, members of the board, uh, this item uh, requests approval to increase expenditures to Stock and Lou, who are working with us uh, to define and resolve um, some questions that exist around security on our web and to implement a security program and its authorization for up to $2 million in expenditures with the firm. Okay. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Mr. Starr moves. Thank you. Second. Mr. Lum seconds a motion uh, for the authorization of uh, increased expenditure for web security consulting services contract. Um, any discussion? Um, Ms. Thompson, um, there is a potential that this could, um, we could exceed what we're doing tonight even. Uh, Mr. President, Mr. Saar, um, this is um, the authorization for just up to $2 million. If the, we were to need additional services and work to be done, we'd be coming back to the board for that. And, and the funds for this are coming from? Um, Mr. Uh, Saar, members of the board, they are, are likely coming from our operating budget, from, um, from basically our balances. So we're going we're gonna to see a transfer from balances to this particular one? Yes. <coughs> okay. Any other discussion? <clears throat> all, right. all those in favor of approving uh, the architecture consultant selection for re no, I'm sorry, for the uh, authorization of increased expenditure for web security consulting services contract, please say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carries. Uh, the next item is the approval of an architectural architecture consultant selection for remodeling of Agave Hall at Chandler Gilbert Community College. Ms. Thompson. Mr. President, members of the board, this is another of Chandler Gilbert's um, significant projects to further develop its college and it is a remodeling project and we'll move um, at the end to have some classrooms and rehearsal spaces that will supplement space in the Performing Arts Center and we recommend its approval. Okay. Mr. Chairman, question? Yes. On the Agave building, um, when we first approved this preliminary, preliminarily, correct? Uh, yes. Uh, just uh, let me uh, do a point of order. We need a motion to discuss. Is there a, a motion to approve? approve? Mr. Lum moves. Mr. Sarr seconds uh, the motion to approve this. Now, Ms. Pearson. Okay. So, any discussion? <coughs> yes, I would like to discuss. Um, the, when did we first approve this? And it was a preliminary approval, right? Um, Ms. Mr. President, Mrs. Pearson, I, I have Arlen Solacek here. I don't know if he has that specific information about a conceptual approval. Mm -hmm. Okay, January 2013, we approved 
Conceptual approval. So now we are approving the contractor. The architect, sorry. Okay, the architect. By the way, we got a really good price on this for an architect. I like that. Okay. Um, so then, so this is just for the architect. So I'm kind of confused though. If we approved something, what did we approve in the preliminaries? We, um, Ms. Pearson, members of the board, we bring approvals to you in a number of different stages. The first thing that the board approves and CDAC approves is the conceptual project initiation. It's simply an approval for the scope and the total budget of the project <laughs> in concept. We then would bring you, as we are tonight, uh, a design and architectural firm, and if we we're doing a CM at risk for a contractor delivery, we would be bringing that to you, which you'll get next month. So we do this in a series of stages. What you approved before was simply the concept of the project, the approval for Chandler Gilbert to remodel Agave Hall with the content that you show here, that we show here and then the total budget. Okay, then I'm confused because I thought that even in 2012 we did that for Agave Hall for Chandler Gilbert. You did it for the former Did the Coyote Center? The Coyote Center. Oh. Yeah, Coyote Center. Okay. Coyote Center is the large gym and student services project that's You're going busy. at the southeast corner. <laughs> yes. I'm right, thinking, good night. Mm -hmm. Okay, got it. Okay, any other discussion? And all those in favor of the approval of the architecture consultant selection for remodeling of Agave Hall at Chandler Gilbert Community College, please say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carries. Uh, the next item is the approval of contract award for the remodeling of the library at Scottsdale Community College. Ms. Thompson, please. Mr. President, members of the board, this is one of the bond projects for Scottsdale Community College, and it is um, both a remodeling project and that will uh, also add about 3,000 square feet of new space. So it will uh, transform the library building into a modern educational support mm -hmm. space. Okay. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Mr. Miranda moves. Second. Mr. Lum seconds uh, the motion to approve a contract award for the remodeling of the library at Scottsdale Community College. Uh, any discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor of approving the contract, please say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carries. The next item is the approval of a selection on contractors for district wide job order contracting services. Ms. Thompson. Mr. President, members of the board, this recommendation is to approve the selection of five construction contractors to provide these job order contracting services on an on-call or as-needed basis for varied small construction, remodeling, and maintenance projects throughout our college system. Okay. Is there a motion to approve? I move we approve the item. Mr. Lum moves. Mr. Miranda seconds the motion to approve the selection of contractors for district-wide job order contracting <coughs> services. Any discussion? All right, all those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Opposed, aye. no. Motion carries. The next item is a public hearing on Gateway Early College High School approval of proposed budget uh, FY 2013-2014. Um, the, um, let's see, uh, this hearing is required under state law. The purpose of the hearing is to give any resident or taxpayer the opportunity to protest the inclusion of any item in the proposed budgets. First, I'm going to ask Ms. Thompson and her staff to explain on behalf of the governing board the proposed budgets. Mr. President, members of the board, um, this item is one of two items for Gateway. This is uh, part of the public hearing and it is um, to seek the governing board's approval of the proposed budget. The second item for Gateway is the adoption of the budget and that will come later. Uh, there are similarly parallel items for Phoenix College. I have Lisa Smith, who's the principal of Gateway Community College High School, and if she has a moment or two to just speak a little bit about the high school, um, we would uh, appreciate hearing from her. Good 
Good evening, President Bark, members of the board and CEC. Um, I'm Lisa Smith. I'm the principal at Gateway Early College High School. Uh, this current budget for the 2013 school year, 13-14 school year, um, reflects an increase in our enrollment. <coughs> We've brought in about, <coughs> excuse me, about uh, 20 additional students, which puts us pretty much at capacity this year. We really don't have any more room. Um, we were very happy and pleased that we were full by uh, May and have a waiting list. So this budget, really the only increases that we see is to cover the additional cost of additional students for supplies and facilities, things like that. How many students do you have? Okay. How many students do you have? Um, this current, <clears throat> excuse me, we had 248. And we're going to be about 265, 270 this year. And your additional ADM is built into the revenues? It is. It's built into to, this to, budget. To that number? Yes. Yes. The state actually gives us forms, and we plug in the numbers, and they tell us how much that additional funding is. So what, that's do you put there. a percentage away to pay for college classes? How do you do that? <clears throat> we pay full college tuition out of our funding from the Arizona Department of Education. Um, those classes, it's called concurrent enrollment, and those classes count for high school credit as well as college credit. So we build that into our budget. How, you, by percentage, or how do you calculate how much you're going to build in? Um, it is by a percentage. A lot of it is really just looking at past enrollment. Um, each year, every child has to apply to take college classes, and that's built on their grades. <clears throat> maturity, attendance, things like that. So we're making sure they're going to be successful. Um, we're able to put about 85% of our kids in college classes. And we balance that out by looking at freshmen can take one class at a time, sophomores can take two, and we really just extrapolate the money, the, the numbers, and come up with a, a number that we need. Do you have to do fundraising in addition? Um, well, uh, <clears throat> We do do fundraising on our own private time for kids that don't qualify for in-state tuition. Okay. So the high school is not able to pay for that. Mm -hmm. Also, zero, zero uh, dropout rate, right? Maybe. That's right, last year, zero <laughs> dropout rate. Very impressive. Right? So, and we were in A school last year, 0% um, mm -hmm. dropout rate, about a 96% graduation rate, which is mm -hmm. really high. Mm -hmm. So, wow. so um, mm -hmm. you know, things are going on, going pretty yeah. well. So, well, Are you adding a new teacher, or are you adding just um, replacing some teachers? We're replacing some teachers. Mm -hmm. That hasn't increased? No, no. We're really... Uh, Right now, at that tipping point, that if we bring on more students, we'll have to add more teachers. Um, because we're a high school, if I brought on 25 more kids, I'd have to add four more teachers mm -hmm. and not one, because somebody has to teach science, social studies, mm -hmm. math, and English. So, so we're pretty. I, I, I believe we're really at the capacity we can be for right now. We're talking to the boss, superintendent of elementary school, yes. and he's pushing his schools to your school because he's yes. so impressed with it. Yeah. I've worked with uh, yeah. Dr. Smith <laughs> on several things, and, and uh, we have a really good working relationship with Bolts and Creighton, the two mm -hmm. feeder districts we have. So, good. Thank, Thank you. you for your report. Thank you. Okay. Uh, we also have the Phoenix College Preparatory Academy. You'll need to vote on both of these. Uh, yeah. uh, you'll need to vote on this one and then the next Do them one. separately? Well, we do is everybody. You but can if you want. The, you've got the hearings as a, for both of them before we do the votes. Right. So yeah. you have to vote on the approval of um, this Gateway High School. You have to vote twice on each right. college, on each high school. So you have to vote on the approval of the Gateway High School, and then vote on the approval of yes. the Phoenix, and then you go into the adoption okay. of each one. So, so you have four you, votes. I, you want us to vote on the, uh, the Gateway School and then do the hearing for the yes. Phoenix College and the vote. Okay. Yes. We're voting on the budget. Yes. All right. Uh, I move before, you well, wait, wait, wait. To the First, uh, after this presentation, are there any uh, uh, comments from taxpayers? Uh, you now have an opportunity to address the governing board uh, concerning the inclusion of any item in the proposed budgets. Are there taxpayers who wish to address the governing board on the Gateway budget? 
Hearing none, I will entertain a motion to approve the budget for the Gateway Early College High School. So moved. Mr. Miranda moves. Second. Mr. Sarr seconds. A motion to approve uh, the budget for the Gateway Early College High School. Any discussion? Hearing none, <clears throat> all those in favor of the approval of the Gateway Early College High School budget, please say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carries. Uh, next is the Phoenix College Preparatory Academy. Ms. Thompson. Uh, Mr. President, members of the board, similar to Gateway, uh, this item is to approve the 2013-14 um, proposed budget. And I'd ask Dr. Kakar if she had a few comments to offer the board on this recommendation. Uh, yes, we're... Um, should I go to the phone? You can if you want. Okay. Okay. Oh. <laughs> Good evening, and thank you for having me share a little bit of information about our charter high school. Um, we're in a transi in transition phase. Our acting principal is actually on vacation this week, but we have our new principal that you've now said we may hire. Uh, he'll be starting on uh, July 1st, and we're very excited about that. His name is Keith Brown, and he has a lot of experience um, in working with charter high schools and um, not only with, um, well, Kevin Johnson uh, and up in Sa Sacramento opening a charter school, but also some experience uh, in the local area as well. And so we are really doing our best to build our enrollment. We're quite excited. We have currently 51 students that have uh, confirmed that they will be returning. We're also having a recruitment open house on Thursday evening from 5 to 7. We currently have eight freshmen, but we have seven families that will be attending the recruitment, and they are all freshmen. And so we're going to continue doing that. Uh, we will be visiting several charter middle schools that are around Phoenix College area, and um, we feel like that's going to be, help us build the freshman class as well. Um, we also um, are very excited because if our budget is approved by the board, we'd like to bring on a full-time science faculty member. Um, that would help us a great deal with the upcoming changes in some of the assessments that are going to be done by the state. We saw a great increase in mathematics scores because we had a full-time math faculty. So we're hoping that we'll be able to add that faculty member. And uh, because we have uh, the Affordable Act Care, we can't, or um, the Affordable Act Care. Affordable Care Act. Yes. <laughs> um, we would have, we cannot have as uh, load our, our, our part-time faculty as, as many hours. So we would have to have four part-time faculty, and we feel like it would be stronger for our school to have one full, another full-time faculty member and then keep two part-time faculty. So we're really excited, and we feel like we're going to have a growth spurt this year. Questions from the board? Are, are you keeping the online classes? Or are we going to do something? How? We're going to do, uh, we have a, it's a kind of a blended approach. It's a hybrid ap approach. We do, the current group that we're working with, we have a license with them through February. But the new principal is going to be working with the faculty and working with um, some of the students. And then we had talked about doing a brainstorming session with the students themselves to see if that's the approach we want to continue with the hybrid blended approach. I, uh, I'll join you uh, Thursday afternoon. Okay, mm -hmm. five o'clock. Great, thank you. You're three in there at five. <laughs> um, the, the current interim uh, principal? Acting principal, uh-huh. Uh, is going where? He's actually leaving the district. He finished his doctorate and he's going to another district, an elementary school district. And um, he felt like that was more in his career path and the direction that he wanted to go. Yeah. So we wished him well. <laughs> he, he, he was wonderful, did a great job while he's with us. Yeah, what's, uh, your enrollment was 51 last year, is that it? Or? We were a little higher than 58, but we had a graduating class of about seven, or 12, 12 oh, students, oh. so that reduced it. And, then, uh, and our and freshman class, we're building the freshman class as we speak. And I guess my next question is, what's your projections for this year? Well, we hope to get it up to about 70 if we can. And then the following year, try to build even more. 
our maximum number of students that we can have at the school is 100. That's your capacity? Yes. Mm -hmm. Other questions? The, um, I guess from Gateway, we just heard that the freshmen take a class, and um, I was kind of having a disagreement with the past principal on can freshmen take classes and trying to say, yes, we can, as opposed to I don't think we should. Kind of. Yeah, I think he had just uh, finished a, 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 oh, a, a meeting with some of the counseling faculty at Phoenix College, and we have a student success course that traditionally we put freshmen in. And um, they were just talking in terms of that maybe some of the freshmen freshman students were not as mature or ready for that freshman class, and others did quite well. So I think that's a, a discussion we'll have with the new principal and the counseling faculty at Phoenix College and see, see if we, you know, can... I think also we have uh, have done a great job recruiting, uh, I, w I want to say more mature kind of ready students. Um, I think we had some students that maybe just weren't as mature as they needed to be to take a college class. And that's why the discussion took place with our <coughs> counseling faculty at Phoenix College and the acting principal. But we'll revisit. Yeah, I, I yeah. think my thoughts were just, how do you know if they're ready until you put them in there? Right, and exactly. Kind of thing, right? And we want them to be you successful. Measure, how do you measure right. maturity? You know, the, the yeah. Throwing spit wads during the class. Yeah. Well, that's one, one, <laughs> that's one <laughs> test. <laughs> Thanks. Okay, thank you. <coughs> All right. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Um, is there a motion? Let's see. We are, uh, no, wait, stop. First of all, uh, you've heard the presentation to the governing board, uh, and now it's time for any taxpayer, any citizen, to address concerns to the governing board about the budget of the uh, uh, Phoenix College uh, early, uh, let's see, th this is the Phoenix College Preparatory Academy. Is there any taxpayer who wishes to address the governing board? Hearing none, I entertain a motion to approve the budget for the Phoenix College Preparatory Academy for 2013-2014. Mr. Sar moves. Second. Mr. Lum seconds the motion to approve the uh, the budget. Uh, any discussion? All, right, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carries. Um, and um, we are now to the monitoring report. Uh, Ms. Thompson. Ms. Burks. To do the adoption of each of the budgets. Adopting what? We have to adopt. Have to vote. Another vote. Give two more votes. Procedural. Option. Okay, I, I don't see it. I, I move we adopt the uh, budget for um, Gateways Charter School, Phoenix College. Second. Uh, okay, yeah. But that's what. I, but we took a vote on that. I see. All right. It's, don't worry. It's <laughs> I got totally it. Got it. Got it. Okay. Nice. So now this is a motion to adopt the budget. That's correct. All right. And you and you made you it. made the motion. Is I there a second? It. Ms. Pearson seconds the motion. Okay. Uh, and um, so the is there any discussion on the adoption of the Gateway Early College budget? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carries. Now we're adopting the Phoenix College Prep Preparatory Academy budget. Mm -hmm. so moved. Mr. Second. Starr moves. Second. Ms. Pearson seconds uh, the motion to approve the Phoenix <coughs> College Preparatory Academy proposed budget 2013-2014. Any discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carries. Are we to the monitoring report now? Yes. <laughs> uh, Mr. President, members of the board, this is uh, the monitoring report for the general fund for 11 months of the fiscal year, so nearly the whole fiscal year. As I have indicated in prior reports on this item, um, our spending is uh, as we would expect, it's, um, also consistent with prior year spending patterns, which we expect because most of our spending is in payroll and that comes every two weeks. Revenue collections are on target as well, and we expect to end the year with a slight increase in fund balance. Okay. Um, 
All right. Um, the next item on the the uh, uh, agenda is uh, one I'd like to explain. Uh, we have gone through discussion of our uh, of our policies for the last six months, roughly, and uh, in August and September, uh, we'd like to schedule uh, any uh, any changes that might come for policies or um, the chancellor limitations. And the question is, how do we prepare for that? Uh, one board member has recommended that a committee meet with Teresa Tony, who is uh, uh, sort of a manager of uh, the policy governance operation, to bring a recommendation to the board. Uh, but I want to make it open to as many board members as possible. So I'm looking for a direction about ways to proceed. Um, and I'm wondering if it would be possible for, for me to announce certain days in which we will be deliberating proposed uh, changes of policy or limitations, and as many board members uh, as possible can come. The alternative is for all of us to participate and just call a meeting to do that. So I need to know how you want to proceed. I'd like to see a hybrid, I mean, a combination of both both aspects. So we, we get uh, a meeting, I mean, uh, several times that board members can meet and get, and then uh, get familiarized with the whole process and then meet as a group together. Down the road. Mm -hmm. down well, the road. Define down the road. Well, Define. August and September. Two weeks, three weeks. Uh, August and September are... Uh, we and I'm talking about the work sessions in August and September. Okay, August and September is fine. And can we, um, Mr. Chairman, um, can can we check with our uh, district people to see if it's possible to set it up online so that the meetings can be observed without board and the discussion with whoever does attend and can attend uh, can participate via online. Always. We can do it. We can do it by. Uh, we can do it by phone. Although or, that is horrible. I want to. Uh, uh, we need to do it by either a, a Skype, Skype or phone. something that is more efficient and effective than phone. Phone is mm -hmm. for it. That is not participating. Mm -hmm. That is called giving a board member a migraine. We are in an IT. I mean, a technology mm -hmm. era. We need to be able to have this set up to where it can be done online. Mm -hmm. Um, Good idea. We got an IT person. I'm, I'm, I'm looking for an IT, IT person. person. Uh, it should be hard. Yeah. Where's our IT person sitting Way in the, the audience? Back. Way in the no, back. There. there. <laughs> are, are we are we set up to do Skype? We can be set up for Skype. Yes, we can. We can make that happen. Okay. Or how about Google Plus or something? Skype would be our preference. Okay. All right. Fine. Um, then. Uh, uh, what I will do is uh, establish some dates, uh, and I, I think in July, early, uh, well, yeah, July, really, uh, for those who can get together uh, to meet and discuss any proposed changes in policy or limitations. And those who can participate uh, are welcome. Eventually, all of this work will be presented to the entire board in August and September uh, for uh, discussion. Is that agreeable? Very good. Thank you very much. We don't have to vote on that where it's a board it, no, th no, item? No, this is not a voting okay. item. It's just discussion. I can, Got it. You know, I can call a meeting. I don't have a problem with the committee idea either. Someone working with Theresa Tony and, uh -huh. and, and bringing ideas to the board. Okay. Uh, and uh, when when these meetings are called, if there are three members or more, we will do a public notice that we're having this discussion. Uh, uh, the next item is community linkage. Uh, Mr. Lum? I have nothing. No? Mr. Miranda? No. Ms. Pearson? What? Do you have a report? No, no report. No? Mr. Starr? None. Uh, all right, I pass. 
The internal community, uh, Dr. Glasper. Mr. Burke, members of the board, tonight I have um, one item that I would like to present to the board. Over the past few months, I have tasked uh, a group of uh, very energetic individuals to <coughs> present to us what is described as IMOR, Integrated Marketing Outreach Recruitment and Retention Initiative. This is one of 17 initiatives that we are moving forward in the district to address student success. And the IMORE initiative is essentially an initiative that will begin to look at how we brand ourselves as the Maricopa Colleges and how we look at ourselves as a district in addition to the change in processes and technologies uh, to, to move towards having a seamless experience for our students. So we brought together some individuals from across the district and tonight um, they have a presentation that I would like to share with the board because I think they've made some significant progress in the last four months and it, it provides a framework for us to begin to look at how we will be perceived as Maricopa both within the valley in the state and nationally and with that I would like to ask uh, Dr. Felicia Ganther, Associate Vice Chancellor for Student Affairs to come up introduce her team and make your presentation Good evening. Good evening. Right. To President Burke, the members of the governing board, to Chancellor Glasper, <coughs> members of CEC, I'm very happy uh, to stand before you representing uh, Dr. Linda Luhan, Dr. Chris Bustamante, Dr. Cheryl Olson as our executive sponsors along with Dr. Harper Marinick as we are moving forward, integrate, moving forward towards integrated marketing outreach, recruitment, and retention. I'd like to introduce um, the team. Uh, these are energetic, and I want to say young because hopefully they're as young as I am. Uh, but I'd like to introduce them so you'll know who they are. First, uh, Kevin Builder. Kevin Builder is the project manager. Ralph Campbell is a project lead for marketing. Genesis Tool is the project lead for retention. And Jesus. Cheres Hernandez is the marketing is the lead for um, recruitment. So this is the team that's been working hard, and I could not take credit for this wonderful presentation because they've been working on it to make sure that it's just right for tonight. So thank you. <coughs> so I'll talk a little bit about what um, IMOR is, and really it is to support uh, the One Maricopa effort. Um, it's about helping students to succeed. It's also about using public resources efficiently and effectively and most importantly working together as one. We're also interested in collaborating to make sure that we have uh, better services for our students and we want to think differently and creatively and outside of the box um, and as we do that we want to make sure that we're embracing doing those things differently and moving towards of course a new and better tomorrow. So what's the landscape here? We have the governing board outcomes, we have the uh, district strategic plan, we have the system-wide enrollment management, and so all of those things are definitely impacting and affecting the landscape here in the district. We have seamless student experience, which I'm sure everyone is very familiar with, uh, the student success initiative, which is moving on um, uh, implementing mandatory experiences for our new students. And the student in the community do not see us as a unified entity, but sometimes as separate institutions. So we want to make sure that as we're implementing all of these wonderful, exciting initiatives across all of our colleges, we want to make sure that they have a new student experience. So this is what we want to do. We want to work on branding, marketing, outreach, recruitment, and retention. to do these things, to develop a student-centric and outcome-oriented plan, emphasizing the promotion of enrollment and strategies for retaining students. So this is what we've done from February 25th, 2013 to be exact, up to this date. We've created a communication plan. We've looked at initiatives of the web pages and other collateral ma materials. We've identified business problems and the impact of them system-wide. 
We've done some national research and best practices. We've looked at goals, strategies, and tasks. And we've also looked at national brand identifier models across the nation as it relates to community colleges. So this is where we are. We want to create student success DNA. And this is how all of the initiatives that we're working on align to help students to be successful as they come and they utilize our services and they attend our classes and they graduate or they reach their goals. We want them to be successful. So the nucleus, it regulates student activity. And so that's the system-wide enrollment management. That's the programs, the targets, retention, uh, corporate college funding, formula, et cetera. So that's the center, okay? Then we have the student se seamless student experience, which is the Goldie body, which sorts and processes student information. So that's, you know, your admissions, single processes, a single transcript, single student record, sing, uh, a single financial aid application and process. And then you have what's called chromatin, which is the student success initiatives. This strengthens the foundational elements and prepares them for the future. And that's what we're talking about, placement testing, advising, orientation, um, and the student success courses. And then we have IMORE, which is the cell membrane. It controls the information that goes in and out of the sale. So there we have the single brand identity, unified messaging, unified website architecture as an example, common communication tactics and tra tracking, and a unified retention-based employee training, and one system to monitor the execution of this plan. And finally, the cytoplasm unifies all of it, and that's where our CRM, our CS9, our e-advisor, our Maxian, all of our technology comes into play because it helps us to utilize it. These tools help us to do all of the other things that we need to do in order to make students successful. So here's a quick overview of what IMORE has come to today. We want to strengthen the district's plan. We want to focus on image management and student success. We want to promote educational opportunities. We want to focus on specialized and targeted populations. And we want to increase student access to programs and services. In addition, we want to align the use of system-wide tools and websites, unify communication efforts through student life cycle. Keep in mind that retention begins at the first point of contact. And then we want to measure and increase the efficiency and effectiveness of these efforts. So, understanding our scope, we identify what are the business problems. And I'm just going to mention a few. One, inconsistent strategies and approaches for reaching and addressing the needs of targeted populations. Inconsistent use of terminology, which is a real, really big one. Inconsistent branding. Inconsistent technologies. Inconsistent student intake and student uh, success processes with varying levels of resources. Um, and we don't have a robust and integrated approach to ensuring that all collaboration and consistent, there is consistency across the college and the district office. We've identified six non-negotiables from the identification of our business pro problems. We would like to make sure that we have a single brand identity, that we have unified messaging and naming conventions, unified website architecture, common communication ta tactics and tracking mechanisms, a unified retention-based employee training, and one system to monitor plan execution. Digging a little bit deeper into our plan, uh, these are five foundational strategies that we have identified. Um, and again, it goes back to the non-negotiables. We want to make sure we standardize terminology, language, etc. For instance, when, um, when we're talking to students, there might be one school that has an enrollment center one school that has an admissions office, one school that might have a financial office, one might have financial aid, but we want to standardize it so that regardless of what institution a student presents themselves at, that they would have the same type of experience and they would be able to identify the same types of services. Um, we want to coordinate with SSC on required and continuous standardized uh, training, which is very important because we want to make sure that there's a high level of customer service and appreciation for our students. Continue to the next one. So we have several goals. 
The first goal is to strengthen the district's brand to increase student enrollment's persistence and success. Again, unifying the brand approach and, and focusing on a student life cycle. Goal number two, uh, better communication and use of data to drive decision making. Um, that will, of course, be uh, supported by communication, uh, utilizing a CRM or customer relationship management, um, and to align our websites. Goal number three, to develop, strengthen, and implement a coordinated and consistent marketing, outreach, and recruitment effort. Again, this goes back to um, an integrated brand identifier, uh, coordinating promotional efforts across the district, and create a consistent uh, service delivery standard for all outreach and recruit recruitment efforts. Goal number four, develop, strengthen, and communicate coordinated retention efforts and strategies. Basically, you want to look at what we're doing here, and we're doing some really good things, but we want to make them scalable. We want to make sure that they're expanded, that uh, academic coaches are available at all of our colleges. So we want to set high expectations. We want students to establish and complete their goals. We want students to connect to student support services, and we want to participate in activities for more engagement. It's very important in retaining them. So this is what we hope to accomplish in the next year. There are six things here, and I think we have about five or six on the next page. Uh, we want to do some focus groups with current and prospective students. We're going to do market research. We're going to continue to work, at, uh, work and focus on be best practices. We want to develop a brand identity model, consistent delivery standards, and we want to pilot student retention and completion campaigns. We also want to make sure that we are developing and enhancing our current training and we'll be working very closely with SSE to do that. We want to explore uh, professional do um, development opportunities uh, focused on retention messaging. For instance, how do we communicate to students um, through our faculty? How do we communicate to students through our, um, through even the person that works uh, in, the, um, in the cafe? How could they help to um, message to students about retention? Uh, we want to also create uh, website architecture and navigation standards across all of our um, websites, and we want to work with our early outreach programs to make sure that we are retaining as many students as we can from our pre-college programs into um, our first-time uh, college students here on the campus. So that is my presentation, and I hope that I have explained it. Um, I hope that you uh, have, have got something that uh, you appreciate, and if mm -hmm. I can entertain any questions, I'd well, be happy to. I have a question. Yes. Uh, is there a person at each college who, uh, with whom you're coordinating all these efforts? Uh, we have several that? business teams, and all of the colleges are represented on those, including the district. Um, so we have a business team for each of the four areas, and uh, they meet, and there are about 20 to 30 people on each of those teams. All right. I was thinking about one approach. What about the human approach? It seems like you'd be awesome at. <laughs> is, is, is there anybody talking to students? I mean, don't we have somebody asking a student who's dropping out or dropping classes or not attending, giving a phone call and says, what's going on? What are the problems? And they'll tell you. And, and usually little things like if the teacher would answer my email or if I'm having bus problems or, you know, are we spending any money on that, on, on, on human contact with our students? Uh, Actually, we're working on one pilot project with uh, SSE to identify students who, have, who are almost close to graduation at mm -hmm. some of our institutions, to reach out to those students and talk to them to see if there's a way for us to help them to finish or to complete. So that's a pilot project that we're working on to see how well uh, us reaching out to them and them responding. And this could be students who are recent or may have um, not uh, completed a class in the last year. So we're, we're trying some piloted initiatives to see uh, what type of communication would be appropriate at what levels. Well, that's what I like to see the money put at. And we need to pull money out from somewhere else. I, I think that's, because we're spending money on recruitment and we just need to spend the money on retention. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. Well, I have, I have a question. Yes. Uh, yeah, I commend your efforts, by the way. Thank you. But my concern would be, are we just creating another layer here of of whatever you want to call it, but another layer of of, of outreach or I hate to call it bureaucracy, but right. you know, are we creating another layer here when in fact we shouldn't we be relying our 
uh, currently on on uh, on our own employees within whether it's a campus or the district to be doing the kind of things that you've identified there. Yeah. That's one question I have because, you know, <clears throat> will it be that two years from now we'll create another committee mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and it'll have the same objective and with the same, identify the same kind of goals that you know, identify, the, you know, in, in very general terms. Because I found that to be very general, I mean, it's general, it's specific in some ways, but it, does, it doesn't tell me, like Mr. Lum said, what are we doing to contact that student or what are we doing to retain that student? The, the, other, the other thing that I wanted to comment on is this, is that, as we look to the future, because obviously you, you've identified enrollment, communication, marketing and outreach, and retention. Those are your four objectives. At the end, that's what you covered. Um, I guess my question is, at the end of the road, meaning 10 years from today, 20 years from today, when we look at the success of any program, any, any effort like this, are we considering the, where we're going to end up in terms of the type of enrollment we have in terms of age, in terms of gender, in terms of ethnicity, and in terms of the career choice of those individuals. One of the biggest markets, I think, or the biggest enrollments that we should be increasing, I think, are veterans. We need to make a conscious effort as veterans are, are you know, we've had presentations from veterans. And also, when you look at the K-12 enrollment, it's, it's bordering over 50 percent Latino right now. You know, what is it that we're doing to tie into those populations? And, and that would be one of the things that I would ask um, in terms of, of that. I just want to see more practical things that we're doing, but I'm still concerned that we're creating another layer of bureaucracy. And that, and that when we should be coordinating the existing areas of responsibility that have been assigned to staff that we have already. Mr. Chairman, Dr. Yes, Teresa, uh, maybe, please, so let, let me respond, please. Uh, Mr. Mr. Miranda, members of the board, the individuals who are working on this and the outcomes that we are expecting to achieve are utilizing existing employees and looking at existing structures and reframing the structures. We're not adding another level. Uh, a, a better choice of word for me would be and she used it in terms of inconsistent. We're establishing consistent processes and standards. Right now, we have 10 independent accredited institutions that are very competitive. So we have five colleges maybe going to the same high school recruiting. Moving forward, the goal is that we have one or two individuals that have to be knowledgeable about the entire district. Uh, that have to be knowledgeable about where to send individuals because we have a common curriculum or how to navigate the web or how to send students to do some of their own work. Uh, what we're looking at is, is some branding so that when people come to our institution, if they want to take a class over at Estrella and they happen to be at Scottsdale, they can actually get registered at Scottsdale and then be able to take that course. So it, it's trying to, to let people know that all 10 of our colleges are connected and that there will be common language, common places to go. You don't have to get in your car. If you have a question uh, and it's not on the website, there are other ways for us to be able to connect. So it's not an additional infrastructure. These individuals are currently on loan by their colleges, and they will go back to their day jobs here. Uh, and the other 28 people who are on the four different, 28 on each of the four committees. These are people uh, uh, providing their time. But, but I do uh, agree with the assessments and the outcomes that have been described. Prior to this presentation, one of the things we talked about was uh, how can we include more of the student voices? Uh, how do we engage in, in taking the time, and that is recruitment of students, uh, retention of students, how can the student tell us about their journey? So part of that is going to be invested in here. And Felicia was uh, given the responsibilities after the last board meeting to meet with those individuals who presented at the board regarding veterans. Mm -hmm. So she met with them personally and are developing strategies around the 10 colleges as it relates to veterans in support of what we already do. So we did follow up with that, and she just sent me a notice that they have a, a separate scheduled meeting that's coming up shortly. So th it's not an additional bureaucracy. Yeah, Chancellor, I, I can understand. I mean, you've enlightened me a little bit on this. But 
you know, I, I think then what I see is, you know, I still commend your effort, but, but I think I hope that your efforts yield something. In other words, that there's real change created by this, this process that we're embarking on. Well, in terms of real change, we'll, we'll be coming to the board and providing you with outcomes metrics. And the board will pick outcomes metrics and hold us accountable, Move, moving the needle. We, I've, I've worked the last couple of years specifically in terms of reallocation of resources to the colleges to focus less on retention and more on, excuse me, less on uh, recruitment and more on retention because, quite frankly, I've stated in the past and I still believe that we spend uh, uh, three times as much money trying to recruit one student as we can if we just focus on retaining. And that's where the focus is now. And the colleges, as they've been reporting to me, they've been reporting on what have we been doing to, to, uh, to build an, an infrastructure for retention. So as the board looks at the metrics that they would like to have us accountable for, then uh, I truly believe, and we will be asking you to, to have retention as one of those. And the areas that we're moving the needle in each of these areas so that we would be, so that you would see uh, the progress. I, I agree. We, we have two components here, the recruitment and the retention aspect of it. And uh, what I see, I mean, the retention aspect, I think to a certain degree, and maybe not varies from campus to campus, lends itself to the fact that we're here to educate the people that get here. If you don't get here, then we're not as focused on you. And the fact is that I think there's something to be said about putting some emphasis on recruitment, or not some emphasis, but equal emphasis to reach that student and let them know the kind of programs that, you know, our community colleges offer. And I think sometimes that's lacking. Um, I guess what I'm, I'm really looking at, it, it goes really back to something that's as old as old can be. You know, I, when I was at ASU, you know, we had recruitment and retention, R&R. &R. It was always R&R, &R, and it still comes back to, to surface here. We're still focused on that. But I guess what I'm looking at is that, um, what communications we're having with high school? You mentioned you had some students. I guess you were focused on some high schools, or maybe are you focused at all on high school, Felicia, or in terms of interacting with high schools and in terms of the recruitment aspect of it? And I mention that because, Chancellor, I agree with you. I mean, if we have five schools, I mean, five co or two or three campuses, even uh, community college recruiting the same high school students from the same high school, I think, I think there should be a more coordinated effort to do that. I think that's that's something that, that needs to happen in a more coordinated fashion. Um, I mean, I commend your work. I mean, I I, I want you fully empowered <laughs> to create change. You know, because and I'll 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 end it by saying this: there's some similarities in education levels. When I was a Phoenix Union High School District, we, has, we have 750 consult, uh, programs that work with the school district. I think that's way too much. And, and I think so, in some ways, it's knowing what the left hand and the right hand are doing on each campus. You mentioned some great ideas by it up there. I mean, you, you really, you put, I know you put a lot of effort into it. Now we just got to move forward and, and realize some real gains from it. And I think, again, focus on what kind of students we're going to have in 20 years. Look, I mean, if you could just wave a magic wand and put students in a classroom and say, what would they look like and what would they be coming from? So as we move forward with this thing, I would hope that that would be the objective to look to the future with that kind of vision. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you for your work. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, Deborah. Deborah. Can you go back to your opening page, please, Felicia? I figured out the marketing, outreach, recruitment, and retention. What's the B? Branding. Thank you. Got it. Hey, thanks. Did you have comments? Yeah, I, I think what you guys presented is, is awesome. Uh, I, um, I like the direction you're going with, but I still like the human touch. And I, and I think you have the, the talent on your committee. I mean, they've proven themselves, you've proven yourself, and the cultural sensitivity to 
to add more of the human touch. I mean, you know, there's, there's a lot of staff that um, after registration is done, they're looking for work and, you know, they should be making 10, 15 calls a day I and mean, just things like that. And I, and I, I know you guys can do that. Thank you. I'm, oh, wait, wait. Mr. Starr has a comment. I can't let you go. <laughs> it, and I, I've got a whole sermon on the, the three that we were missing one. And got a, a retention, a recruitment, retention, and to me, the most important is placement. But I'll save that sermon for another time. Okay. Yeah, save I like it. the good idea. Yeah. <laughs> um, but Felicia, I think um, in your in your presentation, and Chancellor, maybe a question or a comment to you is: This is a major step in the one Maricopa process. Um, I, I've noticed for you know 30 years, each of the colleges has their own identity, their own logo, their own brand. Now, um, and I think it's a good idea. I'm not sure all the people sitting in front of me do that. That you're kind of coming together on a common branding. Not that you're going to have a common, um, you know, mascot or a common, you know, um, website content. But I can see, and if you tell me if I'm wrong on my, what I'm hearing, that. You're going to be more consistent in all of our websites, so that <laughs> when you're in, um, you know, Scottsdale's or Rio's, you're you're, you're a looking. A link is a link is a link across. You can and yet, you're still going. giving them some creativity. Yes. So that you know, Rio's billboards, now um, Mesa's billboards as well, <laughs> um, are good. They're both different. They're both promoting their own uh, programs. That's going to stay out there. The competitiveness is not going to go away. Am I going to get in the wrong? But Mr. Sar, members of the board, I think you're you're right on target. Uh, one one area that we did not show tonight was the committee work that talks about us branding as a Maricopa College, and and they presented a couple of different examples, and we're still doing some extra uh, additional work on that, I should say. But the ultimate goal would would be. Uh, a Maricopa Community College uh, at Australia or uh, something to that effect that allows for you to have the individual district branding, college branding, and even the department uh, athletics or, or something else. So, and, and the goal is also for, for people to, to feel comfortable walking on any of our college campuses and, and recognizing that they will get comments, they will get a standard set of services or be directed to the institution where they want to go yeah and, and I've had feedback from students that in just the small amount of progress we've made so far on the seamless student experience you know it's a big deal the students they like the ability to um, see it as as ten colleges all using the same system common elements I, I know that there's going to be some challenges Mesa's one stop has a re reputation for or a tradition of another name and I forget what that name is but um, bringing those things together it's not always going to be easy to sell but I think um, our customers see the need for it mm -hmm. so I appreciate <coughs> that happening and I, I hope that after time we'll, we'll work all these other issues out thank you uh, mr. Saar members of the board if you notice the language again uh, on the IMORE project as well as the uh, seamless student experience, uh, I'm using the term non-negotiable. When I say non-negotiable, it's a single brand. And I'm not saying how, but that's the goal. So we sit down, we get in a room, we bring in students and community and others, and we come out with a way with a single brand. But that's the ultimate goal. And, and the progress that this group has made in the last four months I just think is outstanding. And the energy that they came to the table with, uh, and it's continuing. When you, when she just mentioned four other groups with 28 people each, mm -hmm. I mean that's a charge that's been taken serious by the college. Mm -hmm. So uh, we we hear you, and we will refra uh, we will reframe some of our approaches and focus on those areas that uh, we know the board is looking at for outcomes. And we we thank you. Thank Mr. you, Chairman. There is one more comment I would like to make. One of the, I would like to make a suggestion and um, comment based on my own personal experience. One of the, things, the most powerful things is, is words. And so one of the things I kept hoping to see 
and would like to suggest maybe trying to see how to incorporate is the word advocacy, student advocates, student, uh, because to feel as a student that you have an advocate that from the day you enroll, there is an advocate basically assigned to you. And even if that advocate changes, you get notified and you are told who your new advocate is and who that person, what that person's contact information is and everything immediately because every student is assigned to someone and clear up until graduation day that advocate is actually calling you and saying how are you doing you're within your next your couple of last classes mm -hmm. is there anything that you need is there any way I can help you and one of the things I feel we are missing a lot missing in across this district is a mentality and approach of being a student's advocate. We're advisors, we're financial, we're academic. Instead of there being this advocacy role that it's literally our responsibility to check on that student, Rio does a pretty good job of sending little notes. Are you okay? What do you need? You need some help? But yeah, and and during the course they yeah. black light you or something. And so, <laughs> so, I don't know what it is, but students say that they get some kind of something. But even at that, though, still they don't feel. Sarah is trying to get a hold of me. Dang it, it's because I haven't been in class for a few weeks. Dang it, I'm going to have to figure out an excuse or she's going to keep calling. You know, that kind of feeling, though, of there's somebody that's going to miss me. Not just a teacher, but somebody within the system that's going to be calling me if I'm not there. Good idea. Very good. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Um, <laughs> the next item on the agenda is the secretary's report. Mr. Sarr? None. None. Uh, the next item is the faculty executive council report. Dr. Patricia Finkenstock. Great, thank you. President Burke, members of the board, Dr. Glasper, members of CEC, and guests. As the Faculty Association President for Academic Year 2013-14, I look forward to working with the faculty of the district, the other employee groups, the administration, and the governing board to further our shared go goals of better serving our students. I will be aided in these endeavors by the past president of the FEC, Jim Simpson, and our newly elected, as of about three hours ago, president-elect, Keith Hefner. <laughs> um, we're very excited by that. With the support of the other officers of the Faculty Association, many of whom are here, and the Faculty Executive Council, we will work together to implement the many initiatives um, aimed at supporting student success. Thank you. Congratulations on your uh, appointment Thank you. the yeah. presidency. <laughs> <laughs> Not at all. That, that's, that's one of the most exciting jobs in the world. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's see. I don't have any uh, notice of other employee groups, vice chancellors, or college reports. Uh, hearing none. Uh, the external community, uh, the AA, the Arizona Association of District Governing Board uh, members uh, met uh, in June and elected officers, and I was elected an officer. So, what are you now? What is it? What, right. what office do you hold? I, I'm going to be the president next year. Ah, yeah. Yeah. Good, good. I talked to Dr. Glasper about meeting with um, the uh, college presidents in uh, August or September uh, to try to work on the, the statewide conference. Uh, you've heard about this several times. We're having trouble finding a date when everybody can be there, and so, we're, but we're still trying to do it, and uh, I to hope. <laughs> oh, I was just having a side conversation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's an ASU football schedule. Yeah. <laughs> Well, in fact, uh, that came up. Later. Anyway, uh, but uh, the uh, that's the latest from AADGB. ASBA? Nothing. Nothing? Uh, okay. Uh, each of us was handed a legislative update uh, from Mr. Ryan DeMena, whose wife had a baby yesterday. He could not be with us today. So 
Uh, we appreciate um, his uh, reports. And what we will notice is that we didn't get the, uh, the STEM money uh, for capital, but the legislature did approve $4.5 million for uh, adult. adult basic education, which is, uh, that's a good thing. Well, so, it also, does the budget, yeah. Okay. Budget work. Uh, Dr. Glasper, you want to add something? Uh, yes, uh, I would like to add a few things on the legislative mm -hmm. update. But before I do that, and we'll, we would be, I would be neglect if I didn't mention that we have in the audience, I'd like to introduce Dr. Stephen Gonzalez, who is our new president at Gateway, who will be starting on July 1st. Stephen, mm -hmm. could you stand up? I just want to emphasize every board meeting is just like this. <laughs> Why are you emphasizing that? See, I'm just trying to set way. the tone. <laughs> uh, does it get any better? Are you saying it? <laughs> <laughs> and he's got some swamp land. <laughs> uh, Mr. Burke, uh, members of the board, we believe that we were successful in the legislative session because we were able to restore the funding for. Uh, the uh, adult basic education, and Rio is the largest provider of adult ba basic education in the state, mm -hmm. so they will not have to utilize their their funds as they have over the past few years. Uh, we, th we think now that it is back in, in the budget that uh, we will be able to continue the funding in, in the years to come, at least so uh, there will be more effort. In addition to that, uh, although Maricopa and Pima were not funded for capital, Capital has not been funded in the state of Arizona for over five years. And this allows us now to at least have a line item in the budget. And we, we can talk about uh, the fact that we were pushing for about $11.5 million to give funding for at 50% for all community colleges. And that we think the effort is still there. Well, we were uh, told at the end of the session that we are loved and and that will be remembered for next year and, and so forth and so on. So uh, the ledge team is going to be doing some debriefing this week, and we'll be pulling together some strategies for, uh, for our approach uh, moving forward. I would like to mention to the board as well, we interviewed a candidate for the position of the Arizona Community College Coordinating Council, and we have uh, agreed upon an individual who... Uh, our single candidate right now, her, her name is, is Diane Bosick, and she currently is the executive director for the Community College Commission in Pennsylvania. And so we're trying to consummate that, and we hope to be able to come back to all the district governing boards in the state with the final announcement, uh, hopefully within the next couple of weeks. Okay. What about the workforce, Tim? The workforce, uh, oh, the workforce, Tim, that's what I was just talking about. That's the $2 million. Why that? What are you talking about? No, that's that's the capital outlay in STEM. So the two million dollars that will be provided to the rural districts will will be provided uh, in a category of of STEM, and it will follow the same uh, the the same reporting requirements as our Prop 301 money uh, in terms of focus on those areas for for that align with workforce, but but are related to science, technology, engineering, and math. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Um, we didn't get this either? No, we didn't get it. Uh, yeah. uh, I, I wanted to point out uh, uh, something about one of our board members. I don't think I did this last month, but we went through a series of graduations in May, and one of our board members went through a graduation and received a master's degree in public administration from Grand Canyon. So I congratulate Ms. Pearson. On, uh, having a, having a Um, the, uh, our next meeting date, uh, the first is July 9 <clears throat> at 3 p.m. in the governing board room. It will be an agenda review. That is a public meeting. What we do is go over the agenda, and we sometimes have much more discussion there than we do at board meetings. Uh, but it is open if you wish to come to that. And then our next uh, business meeting will be July 23 uh, here in the governing board room, a regular board meeting. And with that, this meeting is adjourned.